Hey, Weather Warriors, in this video, I wanted to notify you about the next storm that's being picked up on the models here in the long range. I'm gonna be talking about track timing, location, and whether or not this is gonna be a big snowstorm or not for the Northeastern United States, and also the Central Plains as well. But before we begin, I invite you to subscribe below if you like detailed educational weather forecast breakdowns just like this, and comment below, what is the craziest weather event that you've ever experienced? I have the graphics and tools finally now to create documentaries. So I'll be looking at your suggestions. So let's get right into it here. This is the overview map here. The areas in blue have the greatest potential for a snowstorm from December 3rd through about the 6th. So this is the time period we are focusing on. So not too soon from now through about the 6th of November, uh, December. And then also the Northeastern United States, there is at least a chance. We'll go over that in a second and whether or not it's gonna be a boom or bust. And then in the areas in green, we are uh, expecting uh, some rain and potentially even some thunderstorms as we head towards that time period. So let's go check this out. I wanna show you some uh, interesting features that are happening in the jet stream right now. This is uh, right now, this is the 500 millibar temperature anomalies and it's uh, essentially, or height anomalies, essentially measuring kind of the air masses in the atmosphere. You can see there's a significant ridging out here. This is indicative of warm, expanding dry air in the jet stream. You can see it's bulging into Canada, but we also have a ridge kind of right here, kind of a weak one, but there is some ridging in the east. So this little particular area right here is the focus. This is the storm system. And the issue with this particular storm system is it's kind of all by itself surrounded by warm air. So any cold air that develops for snow within the system is gonna be storm generated. It's gonna be its own little system here. And because of that, if you want, if, you, if you're wanting a snowstorm or not, whether, whether or not you want a snowstorm, the thing to look for here is if this is strong, if this becomes really, really strong, it can generate its own enough cold air and it could develop a lot of wet snow. So we'll be looking at that here in a second. So this is a Thursday, as you head towards uh, Thursday here, you can see there's two little systems. These are kind of competing with each other. It kind of divvies up the energy between two systems, and that's gonna significantly reduce the amount of cold air that comes in and snowfall, and really overall precipitation it does make it a little more widespread, but cold air is gonna be an issue early on. And even as we head towards Saturday, into uh, Saturday night here, you can see this particular system starts to weaken down here and this really gets going. So you can see it's closed off, it's very organized. When you get that closed circular look, it's indicated of a very organized system. It's hugging the coast and as I was talking about, there's very warm waters off the coast. So anytime you get a si powerful system like this to hug up the coast, that warm water can really enhance these storm systems. That's how you get your little nor'easters. So it's gonna be something we really wanna watch but still, you'll look at the warm air here, the, the ridging to the east and the west of the system. That's going to significantly damper the amount of cold air that comes into this particular system. If this is one or two degrees colder, it's going to be a completely different story, which we'll look at here in a second. As we head towards uh, Monday, you can see that this moves in now to the northeast. But now look what's happening here is we finally get a lot more cold air to come down south here as we head towards Monday. So will this come down in time? Will that cold air coming down in time? It's gonna be cutting it very, very close. As you can see Sunday here, finally very cold air in the East Coast, very strong ridging in the West. But as you look on Tuesday here, you might be thinking big snowstorm. The issue with this is, is an open wave. You can see there's no closed off black lines. It's very open. So I'm not expecting a huge snowstorm with that type of look but it might feed cold air into that first system we were looking at. We'll actually look at the precipitation amounts. And we'll look at some of the key trends that are happening here in the models. This is going to be uh, the focus here. This is uh, Thursday now, and you can see the central plains. So this is our uh, storm system we're focusing on right here. You can see a nice fetch of moisture coming out of the Gulf of Mexico. This 540 line is your average virtual temperature being freezing. In the atmosphere, you can see it runs down into the system. It sli slices through the system. But this is the average virtual temperature. It's not going to be always accurate. So you can see rain, still the greens out ahead of this thing or north of this thing in, in Oklahoma. But it's going to be a very cold rain. But you can see it finally transitions to snow into Texas, northern parts of the Texas panhandle, into Kansas, even eastern Colorado earlier on. 
that's going to be a very wet, slushy snow. And then as you can see, as we head towards Friday into Saturday, the system does move to the east and it kind of recycles, regenerates. As we head towards Saturday morning, you can see that 540 line really returns and develops and even deeper than that into Tennessee, northern Alabama. So this is its own storm kind of generating its own cold air. The main polar air mass is way off to the north. And really nothing, nowhere to be seen in Canada. You have to go way north, almost towards the poles to get towards that 540 line. So very warm air out in the uh, western United States. And the air mass is a bit flat here in the east coast. And there's warm air out ahead of it. And that's really cutting off the potential for snow on that warm front, north of that warm front. So it's going to be mostly rain for much of the system. But the best bet for snow will be on the backside where the storm itself generates that cold air. So that's what we're looking at. And this is uh, Saturday morning. As we head towards Saturday afternoon, you can see this GFS computer model is indicating snow now. So it's indicating very heavy snow here. So when you get this type of look, you get this comma head type of look. When you get this cold generated uh, cold air by the storm system, Typically, it's going to be a wet, slushy, heavy snow, and sometimes you'll get thunder snow with that very tightly packed vorticity in the atmosphere and, and vertical velocity. You can see that's indicating snow for uh, parts of West Virginia, Kentucky, Virginia, North Carolina, and even, even eastern Tennessee. As we head towards Sunday night here, you can see this moves to the east. And there's that potential for thunder snow. You can see the low pressure system here. The best bet on that backside usually occurs immediately northwest of the low pressure system. And there's your thunder snow and thunderstorms. And this is impacting West Virginia. Will this happen? We're going to look at some other models and some trends. This is still very uncertain at the moment. As this tracks into Sunday night, you can see this low hugs the coast. So anytime you get these low pressure systems to hug the coast, the potential is there for some very fast development due to those warm waters off the coast. You can see that the 540 line is still north into Canada, and then it finally dips into the eastern United States. So you can see that there's snow indicating by this model south of that 540 line, but the issue is, I think that this is going to be mostly a wet slushy snow. Typically that happens when you see that type of look where you get snow south of that 540 line. So it won't really stick to the streets. And if anything, it'll, it'll stick to the grass. But because of that significant lift, the location being right off the ocean, the closed low type of look, any precipitation that falls could be very, very heavy, very uh, impactful. And then uh, uh, watch as we head towards uh, Sunday and Monday. Finally, we get that cold air, that cold air mass to come in. It's not just necessarily storm generated. Now we actually get an actual cold air mass that comes in that 540 line, very widespread now and into much of the eastern United States. So this is really indicating mostly snow for Maine into southeast Canada now. So it finally comes in. So the timing of this particular air mass and the strength of that initial low pressure system, that's going to be key into de determining how much cold air we can get with this system. Uh, at the moment, we're going to look at the actual snowfall amounts. And uh, we're going to look at the trends here. So we're going to go back and uh, look at uh, Saturday morning at 1 a.m. And I'm going to compare this with the previous model runs of the GFS here. Then we'll compare different models. Now, look at several runs ago. This is several runs ago for the same time period. You can see how it's jumping around a lot. It's going north, south, east, and west. Go back again. So this is indicative of significant uncertainty in the models. There's really no consensus at the moment but if you go back you can see big time snowstorm still dealing with cold air but issues but you can see as we head towards uh, the latest run it's centered right over the northeast it's generally dog legging in this northeast direction so i would not be surprised to see this move just a little bit farther to the northeast and uh not quite hugging the coast but closer to hugging the coast than it is at the moment um, another issue another thing to look for and this has been consistent so we're looking at the inconsistencies now we're looking at the consistencies other than this run right here you'll notice that 
there's been cold air issues with all of these particular systems. So one thing the models are consistent with is really no giant high pressure with cold air uh, moving into the East Coast. So I, I think it's safe to say we'll be dealing with cold air issues and this will be mostly a warm type of event. But like I said, at the moment, there is the indicative possibility of snow and if we do get a degree or cold degree or so colder that can mean the difference between a few inches or an inch and several inches potentially a foot or more so that's something we're really watching but at the moment it does look a little bit too warm in my opinion but let's look at the other models so we'll compare this to other model runs at the same time period here this is going to be sunday at 1 a.m and this is the gfs if you look at the canadian the Canadian is farther southwest. It also has cold air issues, but it does still have snow for West Virginia, Pennsylvania, and that eventually tracks into the northeastern United States and gives the northeast something similar to what the GFS says, a little bit more snow and cold air than what the GFS said. But in my experience, the, the Canadian's model does pretty well for the northeastern United States. If anything, it does over-amplify the storm systems a little bit too much and it delivers a little bit too much cold air from my experience, but the Canadian does do it pretty well. So it would not surprise me if you saw something kind of like this, but maybe just a little bit farther off to the Northeast with the, the best snow bet being in the interior Northeast. If you look at the uh, European, this is a completely different story. You can see it's way off the coast, but the European has been jumping around like the GFS has as well. And it has shown some uh, some precipitation in the Northeast. But like I said, I think the general track, the trend will be a little bit farther to the Northeast than what the current GFS has at the moment. You can see this is the GFS, very organized look like we were saying earlier, but look at the Euro. The Euro has got several different waves that it's competing with. The Northern branch is a little bit stronger. You got this ordeal here. And really this thing just doesn't quite get organized. It's competing with that air mass to the north, and, and it's closed off, but really not a whole lot of positive vorticity advection. So not very organized on the European, but 24 hour snow amounts in the Northeast or the central United States, uh, generally three to six inches. I think that's gonna be a little bit overdone, probably two to four inches or so, you know, maximum in Kansas and uh, Northern Oklahoma, but very wet snow, probably not gonna accumulate too much. Really? But as we head towards uh, the weekend here into the northeastern United States, look at what happens here. That cold generated air that I was talking about with that initial system delivers a good swath of as much as 12 inches, according to the GFS. Now, in my experience, when you get this geometric, really localized geometric kind of look with the snow amounts, usually that's an indication that they're overdoing it and uh, you're dealing with very significant cold air issues. If I were to make a probabilistic guess, I would guess that this area in Tennessee does not receive snow. So even though the model is showing that, I've seen this several times and I just don't think you're gonna see snow there. But as you get a little bit more cold air as that system organizes as it moves to the Northeast and as, as that colder air mass eventually starts to move in, the increasing likelihood for snow increases as we head towards the Northeast here. And as you can see the 24 snow hour amount on Monday here at 7 p.m. We'll go uh, around 1 a.m. on Monday. You can see this model's indicating all the way down to Virginia, up into much of the interior Northeast, as much as three to six inches in some areas, even more than that. If this were to be a degree or more colder, that's the difference between three to six inches and six to 12 inches plus. So this is something we're gonna really have to watch. At the moment, I'm betting on this being a moderate snow event or less due to the consistency in cold air. There's just too much ridging on each side of this event and too much consistency and there not being enough cold air. I don't think that's going to happen. But if you do get more than six inches, it'll be extremely localized in areas where you get that thunder snow potentially to develop. But at the moment, it looks like a moderate snow event or less, unless it's very localized. This is a different system, but right here you can see the gym. Not a whole lot of snow, just a couple of inches. Yeah, and you can see uh, several inches potentially of rain with this particular system for the Northeast. But again, not a whole lot in the Southeast, maybe up to an inch. But the GFS, like I said, is very closed off and very impactful for this region. So as much as one to three inches possibly. If this 
really does trend any colder. We'll be making more videos on this in the future. Right now, it looks to be mostly a rain event near hugging the coast with the chance at a moderate snow event or light to moderate a snow event in the northeastern United States. So I'll be making more videos on this in the future if I see anything big. If you enjoyed this video, guys, subscribe below and uh, hope you guys enjoyed this video and we'll see you soon.